Today on Straight Talk Africa, a look at the fundamental root causes of the ongoing political crisis in the Cameroon. That discussion is coming up next right here on Straight Talk Africa. Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America headquarters here in Washington. I am Shaka Sali, and today we are discussing the Anglophone crisis in the Cameroon. The United States is cutting Cameroon from the African Growth and Opportunity Act over allegations of human rights violations in the English-speaking regions. The crisis has cost more than 3,000 lives and displaced more than 500,000 civilians from their homes. VOA's Paul Ndiho has more. In a letter addressed to the U.S. Congress on Thursday last week, U.S. President Donald Trump said the Central African nation of Cameroon has failed to address concerns over its persistent gross violations of international recognized human rights allegedly committed by Cameroon security forces against the separatists in the English-speaking regions. Cameroon's long-time leader, Paul Bia, succumbed to pressure last month and called for a national dialogue to forge a way forward. But leaders are invited to the highly anticipated talks boycotted, saying they will not take part in any negotiations. They were invited. Uh, some of them didn't feel comfortable coming for reasons they know best. Uh, we wanted them to come and to take part in the discussions. Uh, this is, was a wonderful opportunity for them to come and air their views. Analysts said the national dialogue could have opened the door to a historic peace agreement, ending the unrest which began in October 2016. Clashes broke out in the following weeks. Some protesters were killed, hundreds were arrested and put on trial for charges carrying long sentences or the death penalty. Critics said the talks were not inclusive. I'm not satisfied with the outcome uh, because, I mean, personally, um, what I hold so dearly, a return to a federation, was not one of the recommendations. But the positive I'm taking out of the dialogue was that it was very frank and very honest. Um, for those of us who were in the hall, could tell you how honest it was. Political analysts say support for secession continues to grow as hundreds of thousands demand a breakaway state called Ambazonia. By 2017, newly formed armed groups were attacking army posts in the Anglophone regions. The army responded by burning down villages and shooting civilians. The root causes of the problems are not really addressed. The root causes of the problem is the form of the state. And if the form of the state is not really addressed, then we've not really solved the problem. But yes, we've come, we've talked, proposals have been made, certain uh, opportunities also have been provided. President Bia has struggled to contain this unrest and rarely speaks in public or meets with his government and is said to be spending months each year holidaying in Switzerland. Last month, his government announced that they would drop charges against 333 people imprisoned on trumped-up charges. I did not go to jail so that we could always steal the elections and have a single electoral code. No. I went to change that and fight for the happiness of all our children. I went to prison because I said no to the war in the Northwest. We went back to prison for no reason, and we came out with no reason. We went to prison for our ideas, and we are ready to go back to our ideas. We are not fighting anyone. We fight for Cameroon. You can be against a government, but you stay for your country. In what was seen as a positive move, Cameroon's long-time leader, President Bia, ordered a military tribunal to halt legal proceedings and the release of main opposition leader Maurice Kamto and other opposition figures who have been imprisoned for nearly nine months. Bia, 86, has been president of Cameroon since November 1982. 
He is the second longest serving leader on the continent with nearly 37 years in office. Paul Ndiho, VOA News. Thanks, Paul, for that report. Joining us today are three distinguished guests. With me here in our Washington studio is Dr. Emma Osong, an activist, educator, and aerospace systems engineer for the NASA space program, and Dr. Ebenezer Akwang, leader of the African People's Liberation Movement and the commander-in-chief of the Southern Cameroon's Defense Force. And joining us via phone link up from party headquarters in the Cameroonian capital, Yaounde, is Professor Erubs Ngole Ngole, a former cabinet minister of the government of Cameroon and the leading member of the ruling party. He's also a professor of political science and international relations at the University of Yaounde in Cameroon. I have to say, uh, Emma, Ebenezer, and Erubis, that I am profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host the three of you on Straight Talk Africa. In fact, with the exception of uh, Ebenezer, uh, Emma, and Erubis, this is the first time I am hosting you. So you're most welcome. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Shaka, to be here on the program with you and with my panelists here. Thank you for inviting me. You're most welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Shaka, as usual. I'm grateful. You're very welcome, of course, Ebenezer. And uh, Erubis, can you hear me? Erubis, can you hear me? You're, you're talking to me, Shaka? Can you hear me? Yes. What's the question? I was saying that uh, I am profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host you on Straight Talk Africa for the first time. Yeah, I don't quite get the question because the, the voice is not quite clear. Oh. But uh, if, if, if I, I kind of uh, followed a little bit faintly, what I would say is that, uh, Shaka, you know, um, Cameroon has... Um, is, is um, a unitary, decentralized, democratic republic under a government and a, a president democratically elected by the people on the basis of um, um, one man, one vote in a competitive, under competitive legislation and under a constitution that is fair to everyone. Surely, uh, as a young democracy and a young republic, which is only about 59 years old, there are um, uh, difficulties and challenges here and there. But overall, the people of Cameroon, as a republic, and the government headed by President Bia, which came into, um, in, 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 which, which um, uh, got to the head, helm of the state about 37 years ago, have opted for a democracy that is based on the freedom of the citizen, that is based on the rule of law, that is based on multi-party competitive elections, and that is based for, on respect for the institution. We have differences here and there, but overall, and generally, globally, everyone subscribes to uh, the demo a democratic way of doing things that respects the rule of law and that uh, res uh, respects the sanctity of the human person, human rights, and the freedom of each individual. As I say, there are challenges. But what has happened in Cameroon in the last few years, and in particular in the last three years, is that in two regions out of the ten regions, the two English-speaking regions of the Northwest and Southwest region, some citizens of the English-speaking expression have spoken out their grievances. They started as with lawyers and teachers, but this transformed itself into some sort of um, uh, a political 
separatist, armed separatist movement aimed at, uh, aimed at, uh, at uh, rebellion against the state. They took off arms, but because the government is, is and, and the president of the republic are committed to the rule of law and democracy, his preferred policy approach has been that while the military is carrying out its rebellion functions of keeping law and order, the policy approach and his political option has been to talk, to dialogue. He just finished with a major national dialogue in which all the living forces were invited, and the majority of the participants came from the northwest and southwest region, including some combatants and ex-combatants, meaning some separatists. They talked for five days. They made some very formidable recommendations, and these recommendations are about to be to be uh, implemented. We are all in a mood and looking forward to the implementation of these recommendations. The essential and the objective is that let Cameroon continue to be a united, uh, uh, united democratic republic in which laws are respected, the rule of law applies, in which the liberties of the people are there, but that they be peace, so that there will be no killing, there will be no destruction, there will be no um, stoppage of schools, there will be no kidnapping for ransom, and we can all continue to function as citizens in a free republic where democracy is uh, abound. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Emma, Emma, as you obviously heard, uh, uh, Professor Ngore Ngore talks about uh, how President uh, Paul Bia is committed to the rule of law. There are some critics who say that when you talk about uh, the Cameroon, you're talking about uh, a society of men, not a society of laws. A society of men? Yes, and not a society of laws. First of all, before I answer your question, I want to take just a few seconds to send out my prayers and thoughts to my brothers and sisters who are out there in southern Cameroon, who are displaced in the bushes and have no, no sense of where their next meal would come from. I also want to send out a heartfelt condolence to all families who have lost loved ones. I recognize and we all recognize around the world that these are very trying times for Cameroonians in general and very in particular to Southern Cameroonians. Let me go to your question, and to answer it, I'm going to reference uh, the ex-minister Ngole's response and introductory uh, speech there, which I will reference as party politics. Those are Yaoundé's talking points, and what he has just given for our audience and for your audience, Shaka, is what I call a convenience history, a history of convenience. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? Everybody knows, and the right honorable retired minister knows, that the history of the construct called Cameroon is a whitewash history. If he is true to himself as a son of Southern Cameroons, he would know that the party line of one and indivisible is the convenient history that the world needs to know. Meanwhile, the truth exists the facts are there that two autonomous states entered into a relationship with equal status. And today, what do we have? Something called special status. I would like the minister to share with our audience, with your audience, Shaka, mm -hmm. which country in the world has ever attained independence and not enjoyed the benefits of independence. I think what he has said is what his CPDM cohorts would like him to come to your show and share with the world. The truth remains. The truth is immutable. The truth has a way of staying. In other words, the truth has staying powers. Until and unless the government in Yaoundé recognizes that we are dealing with life, limbs, and liberty, 3,000 people dead by United Nations own standards of um, stock taking, there are uh, 4.1 million 
southern Cameroonians that have been impacted by this crisis. Mm. Of this number, and these are facts that are verifiable, you can go to the UN website, I'll be happy to share that link with your audience. Of the 4.1 million population, in a total population estimated at 8 million southern Cameroon, one out of every two southern Cameroonian has been impacted by this crisis. Of those impacted, 1.266 million people by UN's own statistics are in need of food, shelter, and, and security. In other words, they are at risk of dying from hunger, mm -hmm. from the elements. Now let's just look at what has worked so well in, La, in the Republic of Cameroon, according to the speech that uh, the ex-minister, my brother, has just offered. We have more than half a million internally displaced people mm -hmm. as a result of a war declared on the people of southern Cameroon in, in November of 2017. You have about a quarter of a million. A actually. quarter of a million internally displaced. Now let's look at some more dire statistics. We have um, UN estimates that there are around um, 700 or so healthcare facilities. 40% of those healthcare facilities are not functional. There are a variety of reasons that one can offer. Let me just add one more statistics for the audience to appreciate the dire need for international intervention in that area. There are estimated about 4,400 schools. Of those schools, many have been destroyed. Eight out of every 10 students are of school going age are mm. out of school. Now let's look at this. You're looking at a population where one out of every person is impacted. I'd like to share with your audience, Shaka, that if this crisis was unfolding in other parts in the Western world, mm -hmm. the international community would have brought the force of its might to not only bring peace, but safeguard our common humanity. At this point, the regime in Yaoundé would like the whole world to understand that this is an entire internal crisis that can be relegated to someone who has been in power for 42 years and counting and is still telling his country it's in, an, in emergence. There's a French word for that, emergence. Cameroon is always emerging. So, Bia, having all the levers of control, Shaka, education, judiciary, communication, has used every one of those levers to continue to subjugate the people of Southern Cameroons. And I think that's the story that I like to counter to my brother's own interpretation of Cameroon, the construct called Cameroon, until and unless the world deals with the fundamental root causes of this problem. What BI is doing is putting, as the evidence pile up, BI is coming up, Mr. BI is coming up with ever more interesting and creative ways to solve a problem that he really does not intend to solve. No. Because the problem is not one of dialoguing, it's one of dialoguing to solve and resolve the problems as the inter international community has called for by addressing the root causes and arriving at a just, permanent, and lasting solution. Now, Emma, indeed, uh, in order for anyone to look for and find a solution to the problem, one has to know the fundamental root causes of the problem. Of course. Very, very briefly, what are the fundamental root causes That's of the crisis in the Cameroon? It's very simple. Two countries came together to form a confederation, some have referred to it as, as a federation, and existing as two autonomous states, equal in status. What does that portend? It means each of those two entities have the ability to enjoy all the benefits of having achieved independence. The Republic of Cameroon, having achieved independence in 1960, enjoys all the benefits that accrue to a nation, sovereign, which is with its defined territorial boundaries, enjoys its independence. The other state, having achieved its independence in 1961, 
and through some mix up with the United Nations believing mm. that that portion of um, West Africa cannot be viable if it achieves and maintains independence the one by itself. Neighboring Nigeria. Right. So the history of joining Nigeria and Cameroon is, of course, the international uh, puppeteering of the of the um, of the world. But yes, you achieve independence, mm -hmm. and you don't have the benefit of enjoying independence, and you're giving the 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 uh, you're telling the world that this is one and indivisible. So that root cause by returning to the people mm. of the former British Southern Cameroon, now referred to in the construct called Cameroon as Northwest and Southwest, the full rights of citizenship, mm -hmm. the full rights of having uh, the rights to determine their life, the rights of self determination. Mm. Are all these things are really the root causes I now see. when you when you look to the world and the narrative rem remember I just mentioned to you that the levers of control are, are what media communications education judiciary you will hear the anglophone problem always couch around those issues but those are not the fundamental. Yes, there yeah. are people who protested the educational system being absorbed into a francophonized version. Right. Yes, you will hear about protests, about civil law uh, being imposed on common law cit uh, uh, citizen. Yes, you will hear about bad roads and lack of participation in the, in, in the central government. Those are the symptoms. When you run a fever, mm. there is something underlying it. If you don't address it, the body gives up. Yeah. Let me bring in, uh, let me bring yeah. in uh, um, Ebenezer. Ebenezer, when I did my homework, I found that uh, Camer the Cameroon used to be a colony of German. Until the Germans lost the war, and after losing the war, it was divided in two parts. The, the French part and the English part. Is that correct? Um, somehow you have um, the historical context a little bit right, but this is the problem. German Cameroon <laughs> extended right up to Togoland. There were even parts of Chad that mm. were part of German Cameroon, mm. when you talk of German Cameroon. Mm. This, this is the argument which uh, our, our brothers and sisters of La Republic du Cameroon, who are worried about us restoring our homeland are concerned about telling us that listen the white people came in and you know when the germans were there if the germans were still here would have been one cameroon no we're not one cameroon there was king mangabel of douala the king of i mean king aqua of douala was different from the king of victoria so at that time that the germans were there we still have these kingdoms which were totally separate it was not like one territory where everything was being being run by the same people. The, 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 the crux of the matter so is basically that... basically, you really want to take us back to Barine. No, no, no. 1884, the conference under Chancellor Bismarck, which, in a way, partitioned Africa into different spheres of influence, no, we, as far as Europe was concerned. We, Why don't we talk about what is happening now? Yes, this, this is the problem, Shaka. If, for example, if I may use uh, an analogy of uh, uh, a couple mm -hmm. where you have a, 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 a man and a woman, and they find that they, have ir they develop irreconcilable differences. And, of course, the solution is either they sort out their problems, but since the problem is irreconcilable, you divorce, correct? Yeah, that, that is, that is the, the, the most easiest and legal method of doing it. Are uh, you looking for divorce? What are you looking for? No, I'm not looking for divorce because we were first not married. We were not legally married. Let me put it that way. This is the What problem. were you? Obviously, you were married because no, Cameroon no, we, is a legitimate member no. of the international community. No, we are victims of the Cold War. We were tactically, we were tactically kidnapped. I have to use that word. We were tactically kidnapped because 
when we obtained independence on the 1st of October 1961, the state of La Republique du Cameroon had already obtained its independence. And what I'm saying, on the 1st of January 1960, without us, neither was Nigeria. Nigeria was 1st October 1960. These two entities had us in the middle. Because the government of the Southern Cameroons at that time gave refugee status to people who were fighting a bush war for independence in French Cameroon, who were communist inclined, escaped to our territory to prove that we were different from French Cameroon, which became La Republique du Cameroon. Aijo and the French forces could not move into our territory and arrest those people. So our government gave them a free passage through Nigeria to Ghana when Kwame Nkrumah they will say for send them to Moscow for training. Mm. So now France and the United Kingdom technically were seeing us as a heaven for communism. We are victims of the Cold War. I have to be very frank. Did the two uh, have an option of joining Nigeria? No, we were given that option. What, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that we were given that option. Take, for example, what is going on now. Why is my brother, Elvis Ngolengole, being the one on the other side of the line? I see he's trying to talk. Why is he the one on the line? We are two peoples. Is because when this problem started, the state of La Republic du Cameroon always sent us to solve our problems, but intervene in What it. do you mean by La Republic? Is it the Republic of Cameroon? No, it's La Republic du Cameroon. That is what its official that name. That's its official name in the United Nations. It's not the Republic of Cameroon. Because when it had independence... But if you were to explain that to an average common denominator audience who is watching you here or listening to you, what exactly do you mean by that? La Republique Francaise means the Republic of France. But you cannot translate. It's like when you say Côte d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast is wrong. Côte d'Ivoire is the right name. So the real name of Cameroon is La Republique du Cameroon. It's not the Republic of Cameroon. That is the name which they obtained independence on the 1st of January 1960. And Mr. Elvis Ngolengole is fully aware of that. And what do you want? What do we want? We want dignity. We are fighting against Singification, depersonalization, and dehumanization. And Mr. Evans Ngolengole is fully aware of that. We want to restore our freedom that was taken away from us. We are not asking to destabilize another country. If why are we why are we being compared? What, let me put it this way. You just had uh, a national dialogue. A national dialogue uh, whose idea I think uh, may in fact have come from. Switzerland. No. Where, I don't, where did that idea come from? That idea of national dialogue came from Mr. Bia and his cohorts. It came from people like Mr. Evis Ngole Ngole who prefer the status quo than a solution. That national dialogue had nothing to do with the Southern Cameroon's issue with La Republic du Cameroon. If we truly want to solve this problem, we should sit on the table through an internationally mediated negotiation, speak like human beings and stop this unnecessary carnage where young men and women are dying every day, where children cannot go to school. Do we want peace? Because what we have obtained in Cameroon all these years has not been peace. It has been a temporal negative peace. And we are not... seeking a permanent peace, positive peace, which is going to bring in just peace, which is the existence of justice and peace at the same time. So we are looking for the restoration of our homeland. We are not looking for the destabilization of La Republic du Cameroon. Well, my brother, time happens not to be our best ally, and you are tuned into Straight Talk Africa. We will have more of a discussion in a moment, so please don't go away because we will be right back with you. We're talking about the news and issues you're talking about, sharing stories of development and growth across Africa, around the world, and in our lives. Topics that inform, empower, and change the rules. It's time for Our Voices with me, Heidi Adams Fitzpatrick, and Hadiza Kiari, and Ayan Bior, and Orion Itangi Shaka. It's time for Our Voices. Today's youth are not just the next generation of African leaders, they are today's leaders. And this is the time to invest in them, today, not tomorrow. So let's connect 
Let's engage with each other on issues that will transform our societies. Innovation, leadership, entrepreneurship, things that you're doing to move the continent forward to make you the greatest generation that Africa has known. It's up front every Wednesday, 1730 UTC, right here on The Voice of America. Now let's look at what's on tap for next week's program. On the next Straight Talk Africa, a slum in Uganda and a poor neighborhood in the United States have something in common, chess, taught to underprivileged kids. We'll explore how one man uses chess to create social change on the next Straight Talk Africa. And today we are talking about the root causes of the ongoing political crisis in the Cameroon. Our guests in the studio here are Dr. Emma Osong, an activist, educator, and aerospace systems engineer for NASA's space program, and Dr. Ebenezer Akwang, leader of the African People's Liberation Movement, and the commander-in-chief of Southern Cameroon's Defense Force. And via telephone link-up is Professor Erufs Ngole Ngole, a former cabinet minister in the government of Cameroon and a leading member of the ruling party. He joins us from the party headquarters in the Cameroonian capital of Yaoundé. Well, again, I have to say, Emma, uh, Ebenezer, and Erovis, that I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host you on Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Professor Ngole Ngole, can you hear me? <laughs> Professor Ngole Ngole, can you hear me, please? Well, it seems like uh, we do have some uh, technical problems uh, reaching Professor Ngole Ngole in the Cameroon. Let me come to the studio in the meantime and uh, we'll probably be joined uh, soon by Professor Ngole Ngole. Um, let's, first of all, uh, I'll use an expression that uh, uh, is very practical. There is a saying that uh, you go to war with the army that you have. You have Cameroon right now. Whether you recognize it or you do not, you do have Cameroon, which is recognized by the international community. And hence, it has an ambassador representing the Republic of Cameroon right here in Washington, D.C. And it has a member of the United Nations. You know that. And you probably, in fact, hold a Cameroonian passport. <laughs> Do you? No, not me. <laughs> really? I've never had one before. Actually, I was declared persona non grata in Cameroon. I see. Yeah, um, that, that was done in 1993 when I was supposed to travel to South Africa to study, study divinity at the University of Witwatersra. I see. So they declared me persona non grata that uh, Don't I was an right. agent of the CIA and do not deserve a Cameroonian passport. I see. So they, they did so well for me because it opened my eyes and gave me a different perspective. Let me ask you this uh, very simple question. What would you like to see happening in your homeland? Yeah, what I want to happen in my homeland is to find a possibility where we could live side by side La Republic du Cameroon as a state. I want you to understand that we have not refused to recognize that La Republic du Cameroon exists. What we are feel, what we are saying is that we are not part of that entity. We are not saying they are not a state. They are a state, they have an ambassador. They do not represent us. And what about you? We are at this moment you could declare us as a stateless people. Don't you pay taxes to the Republic of Cameroon? We used to when we were still under total captivity. We are no longer under captivity. That is why you are talking to us here, Saka. In nineteen ninety seven I went to prison. Nobody spoke about this problem. I said it in the military tribunal in 1999, that war is coming if Mr. Bia does not sit up and allow the people of the Southern Cameroons meet with them on the table and discuss this issue. It is in record. 
I said it over the BBC also a couple of years later on when I escaped from prison. No one was willing to listen to me. I sent him a video which is titled We Are Coming. And the head of intelligence in Cameroon reminded me that he took that video to Mr. Bia. But they were so proud. Nobody cares. They said that, that, that video is from, from the son of a plantation worker. They were not willing to solve the problem. The same thing you find our brother Elvis Ngolengole saying here. He brings talking points. Talking points is not going to help. More people will die. The troops of La Republic that are being that are dying in the course of attacking our people are children of men and women. Look, our own children that they are killing. We yeah. do not want people to die, whether it is their forces or our own people. But we are defending ourselves. So let us be human enough to say enough is enough. This carnage does not save anybody, does not save humanity. Let's go and see. Let's check and uh, see whether... Sh Shek, I want to add something to that question that you raised about going to war with the army that you've got. Mm. It is clear that um, the Republic of Cameroon, La Republique du Cameroon, has a state-organized army. When that army takes up arms and attacks you in your own home, according to the last I know, you have the right to defend yourself. That's what's currently going on. The fact that our area is militarized is enough reason for people to flee their homes. The atrocities that they are committed is causing the pain and suffering currently. I'd like to say, and I think I said it earlier, that if this crisis was occurring anywhere else in the Western world, mm. the international community would have mobilized to bring a stop, swift stop to the crisis. Are you alluding, if you look for at example, the events in Kosovo... Are you alluding, for example, to what was once Yugoslavia? Yes. Under Marshal Tito? The, I'm, I'm precisely referencing the case of Kosovo. When they, an autonomous state, agitated for full autonomy, they weren't even looking for independence. The Serbs took on, just like La Republique du Cameroon, killing the, the Bosnian, um, the, 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 the Kosovars. And when it became clear that the carnage was too much, the international community mobilized itself and bombed Serbia. I'm not calling for bombing of La Republique du Cameroon, mm. but I'm calling for what they did, which was put in peacekeeping troops to keep the warring factions apart and you stop know, the killing. You know, the example that uh, is perhaps very close to your situation yeah. is, in fact, Somaliland. I don't believe so. Because Let Somaliland is obviously a part of Somalia. I would push back on but that. But like you, you know, on independence, it had its own government, its own nation, but it chose to join with Somalia, which used to be under the Italians, and became a sort of federation. I think Somaliland the closer has experience since here. been trying, yeah. in fact, to divorce. And Somaliland, by the way, is very well you know, governed. It is probably one of the more democratic nations on the African continent. But up to now, it has, circumstances have forced it to be, remain part of Somalia, where there is no peace and stability. Shaka, we did not choose to join La Republic to Cameroon. We were compelled. You cannot ask a people, do you want independence by joining? Have you taken your case, for example, to the African Union? We won a case in Banjul. In that case, mm -hmm. this very professor, Ngole Ngole, was the key lead leader of the yes, Cameroonian delegation of La Republic du Cameroon. I went to Banjul. We so why don't, we, why don't we actually bring him in? It seems to me, it, it looks like uh, okay, Shaka, the technology ahead, now right? is... Uh... Shaki, Hello? Professor Ngole? Professor Ngole? It looks like uh, we still have uh, uh, the technology is not uh, environmentally friendly as yet. Shaka, what I was saying is that when you give a people two options, it is you either have to jump into a boiling furnace or you jump into the thick fire. And you do not give them an option of escaping any of these routes. 
now you are you have choose you have you have actually chosen for them so the international community because of the cold war politics of the 60s mm. choose for us which was good for us they said listen you've left nigeria which is like a deep fire now we also have this boiling furnace so between these two may you do you want to go back to this uh, uh, to Nigeria, which is like did a, they, a burning did furnace, they choose, or do you want this? Did they choose for you, or did they force you to be part of something that... Uh... They did both. They chose for us by giving us the questions, and then they forced, they compare us by not giving us a third choice. So that is exactly what they did. We are where we are because the world is unable to come to terms that they aired that they betrayed us, that they failed to give us the simple fundamental backings of freedom. You cannot tie another person's freedom to another person. Freedom is freedom. There is no color in it. Now, you say that uh, you would like to be, or to be called the state of Ambazonia? Exactly. Ambazonia. Ambazonia. What does that mean? Ambazonia comes from a bay in, in Victoria, which is located in the southern region of the former British Southern Cameroons, called the Ambas Bay. Mm -hmm. It is a bay where, at this moment, Chinese, French, and troops from La Republique du Cameroon, mm -hmm. if I'm not forgotten, there might be some American troops in that particular area, except of recent when America was trying to cut down um, military aid military, uh, to, to La Republique du Cameroon. It is a bay which, from that bay, that bay is about three, um, um, three hours mm. by sea right to Malabo in Equatorial Guinea. So it is called the Ambas Bay. Okay. So we, our name comes from that geographic confines. That is where we come in with the name Amba Zonia. You are, you are basically neighbors with uh, uh, Theodore Obiang, Obiang Basongo. Yes, my wife. The man that has ruled that republic since 19... 79. Yes. Well, he's, he's, um, Mr. Bia is just competitive with him on how far they can rule. In a sense, uh, because in fact, uh, for Bia is the second longest ruler on the African continent and perhaps the world. That's the best word, yes. ruler. We don't ruler. have leaders. We hardly have leaders in Africa. We have people who rule us. Well, I say ruler perhaps because uh, each time he has won elections, those elections have been very, very strongly disputed. I hope Ambassador Francis Cook will not dispute that. But let me ask you this question now. Do you have any recognition from any African country or anywhere in the world for that matter? Because at one time in the 60s, when there was a crisis in Nigeria, you remember there was, there was Biafra, led by uh, Colonel Odumegu Ojuku. That that uh, political expression was supported by, uh, in West Africa, by President Ufe Bwanyi of Ode Ivory Kodiva. Coast or Côte d'Ivoire. It was also supported by uh, someone from East Africa, Mwarimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere yeah. of Tanzania, and to a lesser degree, Zambian President Kenneth David Kaunda. David Kaunda. Mm. Who supports you? Good question. Well, that is a good question. Who supports us? Um, it depends on what you want to call support. I will tell you that because the United States of America recognizes our right to sovereignty, recognizes the importance of freedom, we have tacit recognition by the United States. Um, what do you mean tacit recognition? Tacit recognition. Have they written you a formal recognition no, tacit, letter? Yeah. What is tacit recognition? Tacit recognition is that we are in the United States. The state of La Republic du Cameroon sees us as terrorists. The United States government doesn't consider us that way. That is why we can do what we are doing because we are not breaking any law, national, American laws, or international laws. We are within the confines of international laws. What we are doing is the right thing to do when your backs have been pushed to the wall, when guns are in front of you, you have to push back or you commit suicide. So that is the first recognition we have the other recognition i want to give to you is that i have traveled the length and breadth of the continent of africa mm. i've met african leaders of different uh, expressions in the west in east in the east except central africa that i've not gone to and as much as people have not put pen and paper to say listen we are supporting you come and uh, train your forces here and all whatnot they mm -hmm. have given their backing i have to be serious what about the british but let me ask yeah, the, british, uh, the british are treating 
the Southern Cameroon's issue in the same way that the United States is doing. I will tell you that we have tacit recognition from the United Kingdom. I say it in the open because the British know we have not break any international law, neither have we break any law of Her Majesty's government. What about the African Union? Uh, what does it say about your situation? The African Union, for example, just like the, the European Union, the United Nations, and some other countries support what they have done for now is to give the tacit, I mean, the direct support to the, um, the internationally mediated Swiss-led process. They have given that backing. But one thing you should also understand is that the African Union as an organization has failed the people of the continent of Africa. And we don't expect much from the African Union. It hasn't solved the problem in Central Africa, which actually, it is actually the mediator there. There is the problem there. There is the Somali land, the, 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 the situation in Somalia. That's the African Union. That's South Sudan. The African Union can resolve it. How are they going to resolve that of the people of Ambazonia and La Republic du Cameroon? Because the African Union is in the calling of La Republique Francaise. France gives them the support financially, gives them the aid, and the African Union is actually being run from Paris, not from Addis Ababa. How can you possibly say that? Uh, that multi-million dollar headquarters in Addis Ababa. The last time I checked, it was not built by France. France does not it need to... It was built by China. Yeah, France does not need to build it. France is running the diplomacy from Paris. China is running the purse from Beijing. The African Union does not exist. It needs to be disbanded. We need a new continental organization for Africa. That is why Ambassador Arikana was chased out. We need an organization that lives with the spirit and the dreams of Mwalimu, Kambarage, What do, what do you mean? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, Kwame Nkrumah and the others. What do you mean uh, Ambassador Arikana Kumboleko was chased from here? Then she was chased because the French president, Macron, called Idris Deby of Chad and told his Chadian citizen, Faki, who is the chairman of the AU, remove this woman. Not chairman. Or chair... Chairman. Chairperson. Yeah, chairperson, chairperson or whatever they call the, him. Chairperson is the South African The, African the South African call that word chairperson. It doesn't exist anywhere. Actually. No, the chairman normally is a president. Of so one of the member countries uh, who becomes the, so the I'm, I'm just, Africa Union. Yeah. I'm just uh, trying commission. to explain how how mm -hmm. how, how, uh, how she was uh, booted out of her position. In fact, France is running things. The African Union is not on the calling of the people of Africa. They are on the calling of those who can protect them, who can continue to allow them to do what they are able to do. That is why 30 years after the assassination of Thomas Sankara, the people of Burkina Faso have risen up and they are now sending a warrant of arrest for Blaise Kampare who did it Ebenezer, because the French Ebenezer, were protecting him. Ebenezer, oh. when it comes to the situation regarding uh, the African Union and uh, her representative to the United States, Ambassador Arikana Chombore Kwao, I can only say that uh, while it is true that you are entitled to your opinion, you are certainly not entitled to your different sets of facts. Well, it depends on what facts are out there. These are the facts I have because I, I have people that I talk to who are working for the African Union. I know that... I'm afraid the facts are not opinions. Well, it depends on what they call facts. If the facts are coming from the African Union, then they are not facts. Are you suggesting, <laughs> like someone once said in this town, that uh, they are perhaps alternative facts? They always are. Well, they are always <laughs> alternative facts. We see them every day. We see it in East Africa. We then see it in facts. Kenya. We see it everywhere. Well, they call them alternative you facts. Know, Let's find I, out I want, whether... to, I want to add something to the last question you just yeah. asked about mm. which countries that do we have any countries that have support for Ambazonia, for the course of Ambazonia. Right. I think the best way to answer this question is to look at French's hegemony on the continent, which uh, Dr. Beniza just alluded to, and how much it insists to keep the status quo, particularly in Franco, Francophone Africa, or what they call French Africa, Francophrique. Um, in the case of Cameroon, it, it's even more so the influence of, of France mm. is, is quite strong in the area, making it such that the, 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 the African states are shying away from supporting mm. what they view as a separatist 
uh, uh, call it separatist movement. In our case, of, of course, it's a restorationist movement mm. uh, that supporting one, of course, opens the borders to others. But it is clear from all the outings, whether it's with the uh, parliament in the UK, resolutions passed at the, at the um, US Congress, mm. uh, statements made by the EU, they are on record calling on the Republic of Cameroon to address the problem by looking at the root causes. And that is what the government of La Republique du Cameroon is running away from. Remember, I, I mentioned to you, Shaka, that mm. when we look at the Anglophone problems, we look at the symptoms of marginalization. There is no country that does not have issues with its minority population. You know, and it is, very, it is very interesting, As for is example, not that. It is very interesting that uh, you keep talking about uh, Anglophone problem. Someone might say Francophone problem. Another one might say Russophone problem, meaning, of course, uh, those which were colonies under the Portuguese. Those but what about, for example, Bantufone? What about the Bantufone problem? Because the last time I checked, the Cameroon happens to be the organic origins of the Bantu. Is that correct? Yes. We could go back into history and make claims for different associations on the continent. The, the trouble with Africa is that someone else orchestrated its current construction, and we are the victims of it. But if we look to the legalities of things, mm. countries are supposed to maintain the borders they achieve at the time of independence. Mm. Shaka, ask the La Republique du Cameroon what borders define the territory that it had at the time of achieving independence. You will find that it does not include the territory of the former British Southern Cameroons. And such is the fundamentals of the problem. So here we are, many years later, debating that which is not answering the problem and asking the question, what is the Anglophone problem? It's not a linguistic problem it that BIA is looking for a bilingualism commission to solve. Neither is it a problem of the judiciary, because every country has issues with their judiciary, their education, and their other problems. Ours is fundamentally to the roots of how we came into being two states, one that achieved independence but today is not benefiting mm. from enjoying uh, its independence as a sovereign nation, albeit in a relationship with another independent country. So we find that over the years, the, the, the government of BIA has systematically chipped away progressively to the point where it's a total assimilation, a total annexation, such that the problems that are manifesting on the street mm. has led to uh, President Bia taking it upon himself to declare war on 8 million people, hoping to squash any rebellion that he believes any one of his creative solutions can solve. Very so we are, we are saying to the international community and everybody who truly wishes to understand the problem that it's not at the surface level. And, and though our history sometimes has been presented in complicated ways, citing different UN resolution, the ABCs of it is really about the freedom of a people today constituting 8 million on the west coast of Africa who achieved independence, but today are not independent, but today, worse off, are, are in a war for, for their own survival. You know, and I think therein lies the, the, the crux of the matter, and until everybody uh, uh, accepts and addresses that. And, and more importantly, petitions the ent entire world to put its effort into finding permanent, lasting peace, not cosmetic, to join the calls from the international community to come to the negotiating table and sit with the, with the restorationists, or they call them separatists in the, in, in the case of Yaoundé, and talk about how to bring this to a permanent solution. Because mm. if we rely on the cosmetic solution, what I call uh, Mr. Bia's creative solution, because the evidence piles up 
he comes up with new solutions that deals on the surface. Like the dialogue? Like the dialogue. The national dialogue you, was do, intended... Do you, do you agree with the same people who actually say that uh, such, a dialogue, such a dialogue perhaps is like imagining a couple planning divorce? While, I mean, a couple, a couple planning a marriage. You know, it's like a couple planning a marriage while concentrating on divorce. It, it does, those analogies have been made. And yes, in our case, under the, under the um, agreement of entering into a confederation, we reserve the right to come out of it because we exercise our sovereignty under that type of treaty. And by the way, only people with a certain degree of sovereignty can enter into those kinds of treaties. So it always baffles me when, the, when uh, those of our brothers who are in the CPDM party mm. choose to asphyxiate the truth, mm. hoping to tell the world and maintain a narrative that, we, that uh, the people of southern Cameroon are simply trying to destabilize that region of Africa. That's not the case. You know, and even if, even if it were, worse situations have happened elsewhere. And when there is uh, death and destruction, the international community has intervened. Mm. Uh, um, and I wanted to go back to something where you said our case was somewhat similar to, uh, was it Somaliland? Somaliland? Mm. I think it's closer to Eritrea. Eritrea. Uh, Eritrea. Eritrea, right, because, than, than uh, to uh, it was Somaliland. Under the yes. United Nations mandate. Exactly. We Just were like a trust. Not like in Namibia. Exactly. We were a Tanganyika, trust territory. Tanzania. <laughs> yeah. And we never, we never enjoyed the benefits of being independent. If there is somebody out there that can point to a country that is declared independent but yet exists as we do, I, I think they will be hard pressed to find one around the world. Very interesting. Yes. You know, um, Ebenezer, there is a saying that uh, every human being needs food, for example, when he or she is hungry, needs water when she or he is thirsty, and needs dignity. Are those the type of things that uh, you're looking for in Ambazonia? We are looking for that and more than that. We are looking, what the people of Ambazonia are looking for is one, we want to save the state of La Republic du Cameroon from disintegrating. What do I mean? If La Republic du Cameroon did not lay off its hands our territory, off its hands our territory, it would disintegrate. This I want to assure you and inform the rest of the world. We are not going back to that construct. So to save La Republic du Cameroon, they must come to the table in good faith, sit with us, and chart a permanent solution to this issue. That is one. Two, we are looking for dignity. We are not looking for dignity because we had dignity before. No, well, we have never had dignity before. Unfortunately, time happens not to be our best ally. On that note, our distinguished guests are Dr. Emma Asong an activist, educator, and aerospace systems engineer for NASA's space program, and Dr. Ebenezer Akwang, leader of the African People's Liberation Movement and the commander-in-chief of the Southern Cameroon's Defense Force. And via telephone link-up, uh, from Yaoundé, unfortunately, we were cut off by technical difficulties from Professor Elvis Gwale, Ngwale, a former cabinet minister and leading member of the ruling party. Thanks to our audience for, for tuning into Straight Talk Africa. In the meantime, get better, not bitter Cameroon, and please remember to keep the African hopes alive.